Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Destiny and welcome back to this tutorial. So in this one, we're going to go ahead and start working with the user model and the profile. And in this one, what we're going to be doing is pretty much extending the custom user model. So a custom user model will allow you to expand it and add more features later on if you would want to, you know, add more features to it. And it is best to do this as soon as you start up your project, you know, to get it out of the way. And even the Django official documentation recommends that you go ahead and create a custom user model. So that's why I want to do this. And for this tutorial, we're going to do it the easy way by extending the already built in user model that we have. So the best thing to do is just go ahead and open up the, the your code editor and I'm going to open up the API and also open up the models. So in here, that's where we're going to be doing it. Now, as usual, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and import some things that we're going to be using. We already have the models imported for us. So we just want to say from Django.db.models. So from Django.db.models.models, we want to go ahead and import um okay for now let's just go ahead and import the abstract feature first so i'm gonna say from django.contrib as we as we keep going we're gonna import other things that we need from django.contrib.auth.models we want to go ahead and import the abstract abstract user not the abstract space user okay so the abstract is just like this and i want to create a class user so i'd highly recommend you call it user because that's what the you know the original Django user model calls it user and down here we're gonna go ahead and add up some some fields that we need I'm gonna add up the username so I'm trying to create a new username field and I'm gonna say username should be equal to models dot then let's use a char field for this one so models dot char field and char field usually takes in max length and let's say the max length should be 100 and that should be it now the next thing that we're gonna need is an email so I'm gonna say models dot email field and you can leave this one as it is, but we want to make it unique because we don't want one user or we don't want two users to be using the same email. And that's because we want to allow users to be able to log in using their email. So in order to allow users to be able to log in using their email, we want to go ahead and add in a username field. So a username field now should be email. And what does this mean? By default, the username field is going to be username. Okay. But this time around, we want to change it to email. And that's why we added this over here. Okay. So with this now, the next thing that we also also want to add is the required field so I'm gonna add in the required field and this one is gonna be needed if a user want to create um, you know a, a super user since it's one let's just get let's just get rid of rid of the list we don't need that and after we've done this let's go ahead and um, also define you know we could you could define a string representation of this object we could say define done the str and in here we just need to pass in a self and let's just go ahead and return self dot um, I could just say return self dot username. Okay, so return self dot username like that. And guys, that's pretty much it for extending or creating a custom user model. Now, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and create a profile model. So I'm going to say class profile. And as usual, this one is going to take in models dot model like this. And what are the things that we want to pass in? The first thing is going to be the user. So the user is going to be um, a one to one field. And what does that mean? That means that we want one user to have one profile. We don't want one user to have two profile or three profile. We just want one user, one profile. So models dot one to one field is going to help us do that. And in here, we want to pass in the user object that we have at the top. And also we want to check for something. So on delete should be equal to what? models dot what cascade and what does this mean hopefully i've explained this in my other tutorials but i'm still going to go ahead and explain it again so whenever this user gets deleted whenever this user objects get deleted we want to delete whatever profile that is related to that user as simple as that now if you don't want to do that you can go ahead and set this to null set underscore null but that is going to take in null should be equal to true but i don't want to do that and also you can even use do nothing okay so nothing is going to happen but i want to use models dot cascade so that's get deleted did. Now after that, what's the next thing? I'm gonna say full name should be equal to models dot character field. Now you could space this out if you want. First name, last name, middle name, surname. But I just I just want to put in a full name. That's gonna be one field. So as we all know, the char field already takes in um, the max names. I'm just gonna say their yeah, full name should be 300. That should be okay for us. And also we want to add in a bio. So I'm just gonna duplicate this one and let's just say bio. And their bio should be as long as you want it to be. And also we need an image, right? Yeah, let's put in an image. So I'm gonna say image should be equal to models dot image field. And the default, the default image should be called what? Default dot jpg. And um, yeah, I think that should be it for the image. And also, where do we want to upload the image to? So let's just say we want to upload the image to, um, let's say, user images. Yeah, that should be okay for us. 
and um, I think that's pretty much it. And I also want to check for something verified. Verified should be equal to models dot boolean field. So in case you want to verify your user and you know give them the the badge icon or something like that, that's why I'm putting this over here. So I'm gonna say the default should be equal to false. By default, a user should not be verified. Now that's pretty much it. So we can go ahead and return a, a string representation of the object. And um, for that one, let's just say we want to return full name. Okay, so just down here instead of self the username, I'm gonna say self the full name, not full clean or full name. Okay, so after we've done that, the next thing that we'd want to do is go ahead and automatically create a profile for a user whenever they create an account using Django Signal. And I'm sure you guys must have already known how to do this by now if you've been following along with my other tutorial. And for this, let's go ahead and import from Django dots dot db dot models dot signal. We want to import what post save so post save like this and just down here let's go ahead and do that down here i'm going to go ahead and write the simple short code that's going to help us do this so the first thing i'm going to say is create user underscore profile you can call that whatever you want it's just a function name and it's going to take in a couple of parameters it's going to take in sender it's going to take in instance and also i wanted to take in created and um finally it should take in axe and keyword axe okay so ax and keyword ax. You know what? Let's just put in all the keyword ax. I think that's okay for me. And um, after that, let's check for something. So if created, what does that mean? If a user is created, we want to go ahead and create a profile for them. So I'm going to say profile.object.create. And this time around, we're just going to say user should be equal to what? The instance. Now, I want you guys to understand what's going on over here. We checked for if created, that's just what the field I will pass in over here. And um, which and this is pretty much gonna check if a user is created. Then what do we wanna do? We just say profile.object.create, grab this profile over here, the profile object, and wanna create a new one. And for the user, it's pretty much passed an instance. So the instance is gonna be the instance of whatever user that's created over here. Don't worry, you guys are gonna see that in action in a couple minutes. And that's pretty much what we wanna do for that one. Let's go ahead and save the profile. So I'm gonna say define save underscore user underscore profile. And um, for this one, it's gonna take in a couple parameters. It's gonna take in sender. It's gonna take in. Okay, I don't think it needs created again. And also in it quacks. Yeah, there you go. Just quacks. Okay, or keyword acts. You can call it whatever you want. Now to save this, we just wanna say instance dot profile dot save. As simple as that. So hopefully you guys understand what's going on. Just use this instance over here and save this profile that we created over here. So hopefully you guys know whenever you use a create like this, you also still need to go ahead and do something like profile.save. So that's the same thing that we did down here. Okay, now let's go ahead and connect all this. I'm going to say post.save. Rather, that's supposed to be post underscore save that we imported above. Hopefully you still remember. Post underscore save dot connect. And what do we want to connect? Create user profile. We want to connect it with what? sender should be equal to the user and also we want to say post.save.connect save user profile and the sender is going to be equal to what user so guys if you've done this that's pretty much what we need to do to automatically create a profile for a user whenever they create an account with our platform as simple as that that's pretty much what we're going to be doing in the model and as you can see it's pretty short so we can come over here and run our python manage.py um make migration so i'm going to break out from the terminal clear this clls and i'm simply going to say python manage.py and i'm going to say make migration but before we make migration there's a couple of things i'd want to do i'd want to go ahead and install this in the admin section so first let's import the things that we created and that's from api.models we want to go ahead and import the user model and also want to import the profile model so i want to create a costume user model so i'm simply i'm just going to say class and let's pass in user admin as simple as this i'm gonna say models uh, uh, oh that's not supposed to be model that's supposed to be admin dot model admin and there's a couple of things that i'd want to pass in i'd want to use a list display let's display the the username let's display the email and uh, i think that should be it the username and email that should be it and i'm gonna copy this or you know what let's just type it out i'm gonna say profile admin hopefully you guys know what this is doing if you don't know don't worry i'm going to show you admin dot model admin and what we want to display the list display should be what um let's say the user user and uh full name that's if they if they have any other any full name let's see what we've got there so we have user full name bio i just need to verify it okay so 
verified. And I want to be able to edit this without actually opening the model. So I'm going to say list editable and I'm going to show you guys what that does. So let's say I want to be able to edit only the verified field. As simple as that. Now let's go ahead and, and save this. So I'm going to say admin.site.register. Now what do I want to register? I'm going to start off with the... Uh, uh, we could go ahead and firstly register the user before we register the user admin or we're going to get a meta error. So I'm going to say admin.site again, dot register. And what do we want to register? We're going to register the profile, not the process locked in. And after the profile, we also want to register the profile admin. As simple as that. That's pretty much what we need to do. But right now, we're going to get an error if we try running our our make migration. Let's just run that. Python manage.py make migration. So hopefully, we get the error and fix it together. Make migration. Just give me a sec. Let me see. Okay, Python manage.py make migration. Just like this. And let's see what we're going to get. Okay, nice one. We got the error. So as you can see, it shows add it add or change a related name argument to the definition auth user so this is trying to tell us that hey we are getting an auth user error something like that now how do we fix this so there is just a simple trick that i usually use to fix this and this is it over here firstly we need to go ahead and add the auth user model down here so i'm just gonna say auth underscore uh user underscore model just like this and what should this be i think it's api dot user so what is this? Now, if we come over to the API app, we have this model called user over here. So you could you could simply grab the API.profile or API dot uh, check me out or whatever, but the user model is called user. So that's why we passed in the API.user. Now let's try running the migration again. And um okay, what do you notice? It says required fields must be a list or topo. Okay, so I think in the in the model over here, there is just one more thing that I think we missed. We're supposed to make this. Yes, I actually did it and then I removed it. So we're, let's just make this a list, okay? So as you can see, it says required fields must be a list or a topo. So if you don't want to make it a list, you can still go ahead and make it a topo. But for now, let's just make it a list. But if for any reason you want to make it a topo, just make sure to add a comma over here or you're going to get an error. Okay, so let's make it a list. Now, after this is done, I'm going to go ahead and run Python manage the py make migrations again, and let's see what we're going to get. Okay, there you go. It's working. And I'm also going to say Python manage the py migrate, and um, they should go ahead and run the migration for us. As you can see, it's applying all this and creating tables for us. So we just want to give this, you know, like a couple of sec and it should successfully make the migrations for us. Okay, there you go. It's, it's done successfully. Now, let's go ahead and run the server. So we're going to say... Python manage to white run server. But before I go ahead and view this, I want to tell you something. So if for any reason you're getting an error that we didn't get over here while trying to make migration, I would want you to come over here and comment the contrib admin out, comment this out, and also comment the main URLs out, this one over here, comment it out before making migration and migrate. So if for any reason you're getting an error that we are not getting, to make sure to do this and everything should work for you. Now, when you are done, make sure to uncomment it again or you're gonna keep getting errors, okay? So right now, this should go ahead and spin our server up and as you can see, we don't have any error and everything is working perfectly well. Now let's come over to our browser and try accessing this again. So if we refresh, it should, it should still show this, but if you try logging into the admin section, slash admin, now we should go ahead and, um, okay, what's going on? There you go. Now, as you can see, it shows this admin section thing over here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and log in with my email and my password. Okay, it says, um, please enter the correct email and password. That's great. And that's because we don't have any super user. So, we need to say Python manage.py create super user, as simple as that. While it's creating a super user, what's the next thing that we're going to do after this? And um, I think that's... Okay, we need to go ahead and add, add up all this. And after that, I think we are done. Then we're going to go ahead and start creating the serializers in the next one. And that's going to be the last one. So now let's create the super user email. I'm going to pass in deskfix at gmail.com. Username, I'm just going to pass in destiny password. My password is usually testing321. Testing321. Okay. So let's go ahead and run the server again. Python manage to py run server. And that should go ahead and spin up our server on port 8000. Now, if you try logging in again, what do you notice? This has successfully logged us in. But I don't like the way my admin panel is, is looking. I don't like the way it's looking. Let's go ahead and change this off. I want you to run pip install Django Jasmine. Okay, pip install. Pip install Django dash Jasmine. 
so hit this when it's finished installing and when it's successfully installed i want you to come over to the settings.py just over here at, at the top i want you to add jasmine okay as simple as that let's make sure our server is still running run the server again there you go it's running so now let's refresh this what do you notice it's changed that up in a blink of an eye so that's pretty much what we're gonna do run pip install django jasmine add jasmine to your, to your settings.py make sure it's above all this and um refresh this and everything should look pretty great now if we come over to users what do you notice we have this destiny user and why is it showing the username and the email like this that's because in the admin section we added it to show the username and the email now if we come over to the profile as you can see it shows the destiny it doesn't show any phone number it shows verified but why is it that we can take the verified from over here usually we are supposed to come over here and take the verified i'm going to add in my full name and my bio but why is that we can up, upload up, update the verify from over here that's because in the admin we added this list editable verified so if for any reason we add the full name the full underscore name and wait for this to to reload as you can see it's reloading let's let's give you some sec it's done now if you come over here and refresh what do you notice we can update the full name from over here that's pretty great but i don't want to be able to update the full name i just want to be able to update only the the verified okay so this is gonna run again and let's refresh there you go so i think that's pretty much it everything is running perfectly well but we still need to go ahead and add up some basic configuration you know add up some rest from our configuration and all that and that's what we're going to be using in the next tutorial so i'm, I'm going to copy this over here i'm going to copy this this is pretty much a default authentication class and I'm going to show you how all this works later in the next tutorial. So just copy that, come over here and paste it. Okay. And let's indent this. So default authentication class, REST framework, simple JWT authentication, JWT authentication. So this is pretty much telling Django, hey Django, we want to use the JWT package to actually work with the authentication classes. So there is a lot of this type of authentication and I'm going to be leaving the link to the documentation here. You can see it somewhere down there. Later I'm going to upload it so you guys can read up on this. Okay. But this is pretty much saying that we want to use the simple JWT package to make sure to add this and everything should work well for you and um, by default the the Django token usually expires every five minutes and that doesn't make any sense so we want to go ahead and, and make this to you know last a little bit longer and how do we do that so in order to make the the tokens last a little bit longer under than five minutes at the top over here we pretty much want to import time delta so I'm gonna say from date time I want to import time delta Okay, time delta just like this and down here we need to go ahead and add in a couple of configuration as you can see I already have this typed out we don't need to waste our time typing it again because I already have it for you guys so just copy and paste and everything should be should work well now if you want to take a close look at this the main important things that we need over here is just this two okay all those other ones over here are just the default and how things should be but if you take a close look at this you see that access token lifetime is five minutes and as you can see, the refresh token lifetime is 50 days. Okay, so from over here, if you want this to be 50 minutes, you could change it to 15. If you want it to be um, 15 minutes, you could change it to 15 minutes. It's totally up to you, whatever you want to do, okay? But for now, let's just leave it at five minutes and that should be great. So the refresh is 50 days. The, the access token is five minutes. That's pretty much what we want to do and we are done. So now we could go ahead and run Python manage.py, um, make migration and uh, Python manage.py migrate. Okay, so that's pretty much it. We run the server and everything should still be working perfectly, perfectly well. Come over here, refresh. As you can see, everything is still working well. So that's gonna be it for this tutorial. In the next one, we're gonna go ahead and start working with the, um, let, let me see what we're gonna be working with. Okay, yeah, we're gonna be creating serializers, views, URLs, and working with the model that we just created. And we're gonna make everything really functional. And after that, we're gonna go over to the next section, which is creating the client using React. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new to make sure to drop a like, consider subscribing. And also you wanna download the source code and the, and the templates that we're gonna be using. Check out the link in the description below. It should take you to my GitHub repo to download the template and the source code for totally free. So yeah, that's gonna be it. Until the next video, my love, peace out.